described it as a painful, sorrowful cry. The kind of cry you do if you just lost somebody very important to you. She ended up following the sound to a storage cupboard. And once she through the spirit box. This makes it a disembodied voice and it takes more energy for a spirit or an entity to communicate directly like that, to speak clearly and loud enough for the living to hear. That takes more energy than speaking through an electronic to imagine going to work knowing that or believing that there are that many spirits there watching you and listening to you. A bit of time goes by and one night Dinah is at the store by herself and she's finishing off hanging costumes up and putting out accessories when there is a knock on the shop door. As Dinah approaches, she sees a man standing outside and she kindly explains that they're not open yet, the shop's not ready yet. And this man, he, he says he's there because he actually used to work in the building when it was a functioning funeral home and he was wondering if it was okay with her he could have one last walk through and see what she'd done with the, with the building and Dinah actually agrees my guess is she thought she may get some answers as to what was going on with the building so she agrees and lets him in. Dinah explains that it's going to be a costume shop and as they're walking around 
this man is explaining what all the different rooms were used for and what used to happen there and Diana brings up the fact of there being no drain in the embalming room it must have been puzzling her for quite some time I think according to this man there was no draining system in the floor so they used to drain the bodies in the sink in a restroom adjacent to the embalming room and his attitude Dana said seemed very cold he didn't seem to have much sympathy for the dead and I know actually questions him about this. It turned out that the funeral home actually had a contract with the local prison. So I'm not sure if other bodies ended up there, but most, if not all of the bodies dealt with in this building were from the prison so you have to think some of the people who get sent to prison are you have murderers serial killers child abusers people who commit sexual assault so you have all that anger and rage and evil and then they are brought into this building when the living that living person has passed away and then you go on to think even more about the condition of what some of them may have died in like they could have been ill in prison they could have been secretly killed by God because it does happen they could have been murdered by another inmate, suicide and all that is now residing in that building. Just before they part ways, Dinah does mention to him about the box of remains that she found and the man kindly agrees to take them from her and deal with it at a local coroner's for so now those remains are out and it clearly made no difference I don't really think that had any effect on the activity in the in the shop finally the day comes of the big opening and it goes incredibly well after close the colleagues go home and it is just Dana, Milan and Jaden they lock up the shop and Dana begins collecting all the receipts and the paperwork that she has to that she has to sort through from the opening. During this time Milan needs to use the restroom. The restroom by the embalmment area. She goes to this bathroom and as she's washing her hands, she begins hearing loud bangs outside the door. She said it startled her, but it didn't really scare her. I think she just thought something maybe fell over or Jaden or Dana had moved something. But it happened again and it was a little bit louder. So she sort of slowly goes out to the door of this bathroom. And as she sort of gets close to the door, there is a really, really loud bang. And this really scares Milan. So she rips the door open. She wants to know who's there and what's made this noise. And on the floor is a huge hook. And the only way I can describe it, and it may be why it actually was, is the large poles with the hook on the end used to open and close uh, top windows in large large buildings 
Their noise has also got the attention of Diana and Jaden, who are now also there. And it's evident that this is what made the noise. It's right outside the door and it's actually very, very secure on a rack not far from the restroom. This is where Diana said she began to get more concerned. It had gone from noises and voices to being a bit aggressive and intimidating almost. So after making sure my arms are okay, Diana asks her to take Jaden home and she'll be there as soon as the paperwork is finished. Milan agrees and she takes Jaden out of the building and back home. Now Diana goes into her little office and she puts her desk lamp on. She said it was the only light on at the time and she begins getting through all this paperwork. Up until this point, Diana had felt nothing in this office. She'd been doing the paperwork, she felt okay, and she said out of nowhere she knew there was somebody else with her. It wasn't Diana or Jaden, and there was nobody else in that building that she knew of. And I think the feeling was that strong, she genuinely thought it might have been a person in there with her. So she actually begins to shout out loud that, you know, if there's anybody there, or oh, call the police. Please leave, you shouldn't be in here. She tries to continue to do the paperwork, but this feeling gets way too much for Dana, and she actually begins to feel scared. So she pulls out her phone. She goes out of her door and begins taking photos on her phone down the different hallways leading out of her office. As she begins looking through these photos, this is what Diana captured on one, only one of the pictures. Now bear in mind, Diana did snap quite a few, some in the same place, some different, and this was the only photo that showed anything Diana says to her, it looks like a man in a suit. I actually had trouble seeing that at first. I have tried to enhance it myself, so I will put a side by side up. So you have the doorway and then you have this, you can make out a figure. And I can see a shirt, I can see a white shirt. And I can see legs. The head seems to blend a bit more with a dark background for me personally. But this actually scared Dana enough to grab her gun from the drawer in her office desk, arm herself and leave the building. That is how scared she was. Not long after, Dana decides to hire somebody just to close shop with her. In case anybody left early, she hired a lady called Michelle. And Michelle seems so cool. She seems like such an awesome person. And she hires her literally just to do the, the closings with her. Thankfully, Michelle is also interested in the paranormal. So they bounce off each other at work in regards to the strange goings on. This one particular night, as they were getting ready to leave, Michelle glances at the CCTV. So they have like a laptop there that shows the CCTV of the shop real time. And the outside CCTV cameras catch Now, I hate to say it, but 
again orbs don't blow me away but this is pretty crazy there are so many flying around the shop and they all it well they do they go through the glass cabinets the display cases they some of the orbs go through them and obviously if that was dust or a bug first off there's that's a lot of dust that's been and just would bounce off of a surface it wouldn't go through it so I found that really interesting actually a couple of weeks pass and Dinah says nothing major happened there was occurrences but nothing dangerous and nothing scary until the one morning they entered the shop and the shop phone is saying that there's a voice message. This is the actual voice message that uh, that was left on the shop phone. Dana actually says that she doesn't think that message was meant for her. She said that she believes that it was accidentally sort of done in some way. And this was the spirits talking to each other, not directly to Dana. After this, Dana keeps thinking back to that very first 
first experience she had down in the empowerment area when she heard the crying sound and because she believed that the crying was a young woman she asked her daughter Jaden for a huge favour she asked Jaden if she would go down with her and ask some questions she believed that Jaden being possibly a similar age this girl's spirit may engage with Jaden reluctantly <laughs> Jaden ends up agreeing and they go down to the area where Dana heard the crying and Jaden begins making herself now and she starts saying hello my name is Jaden is there anybody here? And it's quite quiet. But all of a sudden, this spirit began really, really interacting with Jaden. Jaden ended up finding out that this spirit was a young woman called Angie. And Angie said that she was kept locked in a cabinet. And that she came out was to get assaulted by a group of men and then she was put back in this cupboard so that was her life she was kept in this cupboard she was removed to be assaulted and then thrown back in that was what she knew and surprisingly she ended up getting pregnant by one of these men and it cost her her life everybody in that room which was Jaden, Milan and Dana was so shocked by this they had no idea and she then begins crying and she tells Jaden she wants to go with her she doesn't want to stay here with this man No way she... How could she leave that building and go home with them? You know what I mean? It could have been a different kind of entity betraying a young girl. It wasn't. But how did they know that? And Angie became that desperate pleading and actually began to physically cry she felt that bad for this girl she felt awful and she said I'm sorry but you have to stay here you, you can't come with me then Angie's tone changed and it went from crying to let her go with her to he's coming he was panic and she kept saying over and over again he's here he's coming that's all she kept saying, she kept repeating those words. All of a sudden, Jaden gets scratched on her hand and they are out, they call it there and they leave. I'm not sure when, but after this, Milan and Michelle take it upon themselves to ask some questions in that bathroom where Milan had that experience and where the bodies were drained. Inside this restroom, Michelle sat in one corner and Milan sat in another and they were opposite each other. And Michelle said it was low light in this room but she could clearly see Milan's face. They began asking questions and Michelle said shortly after they started talking amongst ourselves about the activity and openly asking questions to anybody who was there her health just declined rapidly she began feeling dizzy she began feeling nauseous and she said her vision began to just go basically 
she said Milan's face was getting darker and darker as she was looking at her and it was obvious to Milan that there was a problem and Michelle was Michelle needed help Michelle says that not only did the atmosphere get really heavy and dark she began struggling to breathe whether that was to do with panic as I didn't you know I'm not sure but she really did struggle to breathe and as Milan got up to help her Michelle said she turned, now bear in mind she's up a corner and as she turns she said she felt something there, she felt something behind her and as she turns there is this huge shadow sort of, it began engulfing her, it came all around her and Michelle said this was at least an eight foot tall shadow. Milana gets up, she rushes over, she picks Michelle up and they get out and Michelle said as soon as she left that room she it instantly lifted she no longer felt this heaviness and her breathing got better her eyesight began returning to normal and they just could not explain it whatsoever there was, there was no explanation of that now there seems to be a pattern that all of the employees of this costume shop were interested in the paranormal and after hearing what happened to Michelle in the bathroom one of the workers gave Dana details to a spiritual minister and this medium, this psychic was Gailene knew Kaylee personally or if she just heard about her and told Dana to, to get in touch with this woman so she does just that she contacts this Kaylee how she does it I don't know I can't find that information out but she does get hold of Kaylee she contacts her by phone and she didn't even give anything away Kaylee as soon as she picked the phone up, Kayleen knew the building of which Dana was concerned about and without Dana mentioning what the building was or where it was, Kayleen did a walkthrough, sort of a visual walkthrough to Dana of her own shop and Kayleen had never been there but she'd never heard of it, she didn't know Dana it is so strange. Now I believe in the paranormal and that is through personal events that have happened to me. But when it comes to psychics and mediums, I believe in it 100% and I believe there are people out there who have the gift to have premonitions and see the dead and feel the dead. I genuinely Everybody who claims to do that does do it. I really don't. But this Kayleen seemed like the real deal. And Dana genuinely couldn't believe what Kayleen was saying to her. After talking briefly on the phone, Kayleen agrees to go to the shop to meet Dana. I'm not sure how much time has passed, but Kayleen meets Dana at the shop. And as soon as she enters, she is just drawn to the embalmment area and as she gets closer she says there is a soul keeper here and Dana asks what, what does that mean? What is, it? what is that? and Kayleen explains that a soul keeper is it's not a particularly demonic but it is a very evil spirit and they either trick or sort of blackmail I don't know but they they have power over other spirits 
and the more spirits they can keep from crossing over, the more spirits they have around them, the more powerful they are. So it makes you think back to that 92 spirit answer that they got on the spirit box. If there's 92 spirits or more in that area, this soul keeper is just sucking the life out of all of them. All their energy he's using. That's a pretty powerful ghost. Demonic or not, that's powerful. They don't allow any other souls to leave. And they are as evil as in death as they were in life. So usually these soul keepers, that Gaelin calls them, were evil when they were alive. As Gaelin is looking around the area, she said she saw so many spirits. She saw every type of era from the 1800s upwards. She said there were women, children, men, all sorts of ethnicities. It was just flooded with these spirits. But she was drawn to one particular spot. And that was where Jaden contacted Angie. Right by this storage room. As Kylie gets close to this storage room, all those shutters that I mentioned before, they all start to open and close and rattle and bang. And Kylie said she knew it was the soul keeper and it was trying to keep her away. He knew that Gaylene had something that none of the other people in this building had. She had these gifts that all the people he'd encountered hadn't got and he was scared. So he was really trying his best to push her back out of this building. Gaylene says that she, she knows this obviously. She pushes through and eventually she finds Angie was a 14 year old young black woman. That's what Gaylene said but to me. That's not a young woman, that's still a child. That's, that's a young girl. And she had been forced into prostitution at 14 years old. And she told Gaylene exactly what she told Jaden. She was forced in this cupboard and let out to just be sexually assaulted and thrown back in. What Jaden didn't find out was that when she got pregnant, she was now good to these men with with child. So they did a back alley abortion. This ended up being fatal for both Angie and her baby, and that is how she succumb to her fate and it is so sad like even if you don't believe in spirits and the paranormal that's such a sad story it's it's disgusting it really is and Kylie begins to tell Angie that she needs to leave and she doesn't belong there and according to Kylie, Angie became very upset and she was petrified of crossing over, I guess, because she said it would be hell. She wouldn't be going to a good place, not after the life that she led. Now this is where Kaylee tried to reassure her and she said, There is a good life waiting for you now. You don't have to be trapped here anymore. You don't have to be scared of anything or anything free soul and you are free to leave. Gaylene said she told her all that waited for her was love and kindness and light. That was everything. That, there was nothing else. And imagine being Angie, living that life and then being stuck in that building for God knows how long with this soul keeper dude. Preventing it, it probably was saying, oh, you're not good enough, you're worthless. What awaits you after, you know, after this? Where do you think you're going to go? And Gailey really, really pushed this away. And she, she persuaded Angie to cross over. 
so wary of 90 plus spirits as one down and even though that's not a lot that's definitely progress so after this Gailin gets distracted again and she gets drawn this time too you've guessed it the bathroom so as she approaches the door to the bathroom Gailin is actually physically thrown backwards out of the room and Gailin I love Gailin so much Gailin said this pissed her off these are her words and Angie isn't exactly no offence to her, she's not a young woman you know, she's a middle-aged woman and she doesn't give a shite she, she said he pissed her off so bad and she, quotations wanted to kick its ass end quote she was really gooding for this orgy but it was unreal so she physically pushes her way into this bathroom I'm not sure if there was some sort of force or if it was mental but it took a lot of strength for her to get to that room and what I didn't tell you about this room which is where it all makes sense the first thing Kayleen saw was a portal and this portal had been created because on opposite sides of the room of this bathroom were two mirrors two mirrors directly facing each other and Kayleen said anybody it doesn't matter if you believe in the paranormal or not nobody puts two mirrors opposite each other it is eternity if you, you get lost in this image that you see bouncing off each other it's you've done it i'm sure you've done it everybody has done it and it's crazy like it's just never ending and kelly says this is what creates some sort of gateway this sort of eternal passage it just creates this gateway and any spirit can come and go as they please and there was this is why there were so many in this building the end of this story is basically a huge standoff and Kayleen puts herself in the middle of this room and she just began preaching she started shouting to any spirit who would listen to her to not listen to this man he had no hold on them and since they were now past and they weren't living anymore they didn't belong in this world they had to cross off they had to go to that light and they had to meet I mean, if it were prisoners, maybe not so much the light but this is what Gaelian was telling them and she must have slowly begun winning this battle because her words were, I had to go in as a warrior I had to go in without fear that was her words as a, as a medium, as a psychic and she keeps shouting to these spirits leave just go go to the light get out of here you should not be here he has no control over you Kayleen ends up getting physically hurt and ends up with scratches all over her back but it didn't stop her from after preaching to these spirits trying her best to cast out this soul keeper I'm not sure sort of ritual she did but she cast the soul keeper out she advised Dana that this was not the end of him and all she had done was drove him away she hadn't banished him he hadn't disappeared he'd just gone away for a while and she said that there should be no more investigations there should be no more encouraging the Although Kayleen had tried to help these spirits, Kayleen said there was still a lot of evil in that building, regardless of the soul keeper. 
it took every bit of energy in Kylie to do what she did. She actually collapsed with exhaustion after doing this. It really, really drained her. concludes our very first Spooky Sunday video. I hope you enjoyed listening to it. I hope the storytelling wasn't too bad. This is my first time doing this and I really enjoyed looking into this and putting it together. Is this your kind of thing or not? Do you prefer whispers or sort and I've tried to do a bit of a mixture and what do you think about the story? Poor Angie that really got to me that did and have you ever had any strange things in the workplace? I have I had in one job that I had and it was a top room so I had to go all the way up these really long stairs huge staircase to get to like a storage area and I had something weird happen there but a few guys do you believe do you not believe I really look forward to the feedback on this kind of thing and see if it's going to be worth continuing and creating a playlist for it but thank you for listening to my spooky story and I will see you soon.